Hey everyone, this is a guide on how to set up TensorFlow's Object Detection API on the Raspberry Pi. At the end of this guide, you will be able to use pre-chained object detection neural networks to detect and identify objects in a live Pi camera video feed. A written version of this guide is available on the GitHub repository that I've linked in the video description below. There are six steps to set up object detection. One, update the Raspberry Pi. Two, install TensorFlow. Three, install OpenCV. 4. Compile and install protobuf, 5. Set up the TensorFlow directory structure, and 6. Test out the object detector. Okay, let's get started. Before we start setting up TensorFlow object detection, we need to make sure the Raspberry Pi is fully updated. Open a terminal and issue sudo apt-git update. Then issue sudo apt-git dist upgrade. Depending on how long it's been since you've updated your Pi, the upgrade could take anywhere between a minute and an hour. Now that the Pi has been updated, we can install TensorFlow. Create a folder called tf by issuing make dear tf, then cd into it. This folder will hold all the installation files we need for TensorFlow. A pre-built Raspberry Pi compatible wheel file for installing the latest version of TensorFlow is available in the TensorFlow on ARM GitHub repository, which is linked in the video description below and in my GitHub guide. Open the link in your web browser, find the CP35 ARM v7L wheel file, and copy its link address. Go back to your terminal and download the file by typing wgit, then paste the link and press enter. At the time this tutorial was written, the most recent version of TensorFlow was version 1.8.0. If a more recent version is available on the repository, you can download it rather than version 1.8. Alternatively, if the owner of the GitHub repository stops releasing new builds, or if you want some experience compiling Python packages from source code, you can check out my previous video, How to Install TensorFlow on the Raspberry Pi, which shows you how to build and install TensorFlow from source. Now, the wheel file has been downloaded to the tf directory. Install TensorFlow by issuing sudo pip3 install tensorflow, then press tab to autocomplete the path to the wheel file. TensorFlow also needs the libatlas package. Install it by issuing sudo apt-git install libatlas base dev. If this command doesn't work, Try issuing a sudo apt-git update command, then try the libatlas command again. Alright, while we're at it, let's install other dependencies that will be used by the Object Detection API. These are listed in the installation instructions in the TensorFlow's Object Detection GitHub repository. Issue sudo pip3 install, oops, sudo pip3 install pillow lxml jupyter matplotlib and cython when that's finished issue sudo apt-git install python-tk it may already be installed but do it anyway just to make sure all right that's everything we need for tensorflow next up open cv TensorFlow's object detection examples typically use matplotlib to display images, but I prefer to use OpenCV because it's easier to work with and less error prone. The object detection scripts I wrote for this guide use OpenCV. OpenCV has quite a few dependencies that need to be installed through apt-git. If any of the following commands don't work, issue sudo apt-git update and then try again. First, issue sudo apt-git install libjpeg dev libtiff5 dev libjasper dev and libpng12 dev. Alright, after that's done, issue sudo apt-git install libavcodec dev libavformat dev libswscale dev and libv4l dev.
Okay, after that, do sudo apt git install libx vidcore dev and libx264 dev. And finally, sudo apt git install qt4 dev tools. Now that we've got all those installed, we can install OpenCV itself. Issue pip3 install OpenCV Python. Oops, um, the first time I tried the command, pip couldn't connect to the package server for some reason. If that happens to you, just try the command again. Next comes the hard part. The TensorFlow Object Detection API uses Protobuf, a package that implements Google's protocol buffer data format. Unfortunately, there's currently no easy way to install Protobuf on the Raspberry Pi. We have to compile it from source ourselves and then install it. Thanks goes to OS Dev Lab for writing a guide on how to do this, which I've linked in the video description below. First, let's get the packages needed to compile Protobuf from source. Issue sudo apt git install autoconf automake libtool and curl. Then, go to the Protobuf releases page, which is linked in the video description below. Find the Protobuf all 3.6.0 targz link and copy the link address. Go back to the terminal and download the release by issuing wgit, then paste the link address, then press enter. If a more recent version of Protobuf is available, download that instead of version 3.6. Unpack the file by typing tar-zxvf proto, then press tab to complete the path to the file, and press enter. Move into the unpack directory by issuing cd protobuf-3.6.0. Issue dot slash configure, which takes about two minutes. The next two commands take over an hour each to complete, so find something else to do while they're working. Build the package by issuing make. On my Raspberry Pi, the build process took 61 minutes. When it's finished, issue make check. This command can take even longer to complete. It took 107 minutes on my Raspberry Pi. However, sometimes the make check command reports errors and quits out after a short amount of time but for some reason, it seems like the errors won't affect the rest of the build process, so you can ignore them and move on to the next step if you get them. Okay, we're back. My Pi actually froze up about 30 minutes after I issued the make check command, so I power cycled it and then retried the command. It worked the second time. I don't know why, but this build process seems to be pretty unstable, so be ready to do things like rebooting and trying again. Once the make check command is finished, issue, install protoc by issuing sudo make install. Okay, once that's done, issue cd python. Inside the python folder, issue export ld underscore library underscore path equals dot dot slash src slash dot libs. Okay, and then issue python3 setup.py build dash dash cpp underscore implementation. Okay, and then after that, issue python3 setup.py test dash dash cpp implementation. Okay, and finally, issue sudo python3 setup.py install dash dash cpp implementation. Then issue the following path commands. Export protocol buffers python implementation equals cpp. And then export protocol buffers python implementation version equals three. And finally issue sudo ld config. That's it. Now protobuf is installed on the Pi. You can verify it's installed correctly by issuing protoc and making sure there are no errors in the resulting output text. 
For some reason, the Raspberry Pi needs to be restarted after this process or TensorFlow won't work. Go ahead and reboot the Pi now by issuing sudo reboot now. Now that we've installed all the packages, we need to set up the TensorFlow directory. From your home directory, make a directory called TensorFlow1 and cd into it. Download the TensorFlow repository from GitHub by issuing git clone dash dash recurse submodules https github.com slash tensorflow slash models dot git. Next, we need to modify the Python path environment variable to point at some directories inside the TensorFlow repository we just downloaded. We want Python path to be set every time we open a terminal, so we have to modify the bashrc file. Issue sudo nano tilde slash dot bashrc to open it. <clears throat> Move to the end of the file, and on the last line, add export Python path equals dollar sign Python path colon slash home slash pi slash tensorflow one slash models slash research colon slash home slash pi slash tensorflow one slash models slash research slash slim. Okay, once that's done, save and exit the file. So this makes it so that export Python path command is called every time you open a new terminal so the Python path variable will always be set appropriately. You can see when you echo Python path, nothing's returned. But then, close and reopen the terminal. And if you issue echo Python path again, you'll see that it uh, returns what we just set for. CD into TensorFlow1 models research object detection. Now, we'll download the SSD Lite model from the TensorFlow Detection Model Zoo, which is linked in the video description below. The model zoo is Google's collection of pre-trained object detection models. Each model has a certain level of speed and accuracy. For devices with low processing power like the Raspberry Pi, we have to use a fast model, which means it uses less processing power. This comes at a trade-off of having lower accuracy. For this tutorial, we'll use the SSD Lite MobileNet model, which is the fastest model available. While it works well at detecting between visually distinct objects, it doesn't work as well at detecting visually similar objects. If you're having problems getting the model to correctly identify your objects, you can try using a higher accuracy model, but will run slower. Keep in mind that you can also try to improve detection accuracy by providing a larger and more robust set of training images. Also, Google is continuously releasing models with improved speed and performance, so check back at the model zoo often to see if there are any better models. Copy the link to the SSD MobileNet model and go back to the terminal. Type wget, paste the link, and press enter. Then unpack the file by issuing tar-xzvf ssd, then hitting tab to complete the path and pressing enter. Now we need to use protoc to compile the protocol buffer files used by the object detection API. The proto files are located in the research object detection protos directory but we need to execute the command from the research directory. From the home directory, issue cd tensorflow1 models research. From there, issue protoc object, oops, protoc object detection slash protos slash asterisk dot proto dash dash python underscore out equals dot. So as you can see, this command converts all the proto files to Python files in the protos directory. OK, now we've got everything set up for performing object detection on the Pi. I wrote a Python script for detecting objects in live feeds from a Pi camera or USB webcam. The script is located on my GitHub repository. Go to the repository, click on the object detection Pi camera link, and go to the raw version. Copy the URL and then go back to the terminal. From the object detection directory, type wget, then paste the link, and press enter. This downloads the Python script. If you're using a Pi camera, make sure the Pi camera is enabled in the Raspberry Pi configuration menu. 
Before you run the script, be sure to close all other applications, especially your web browser. TensorFlow takes up a lot of memory, so we want to be sure to free up as much space as possible. Run the script by issuing python3 object detection pycamera.py. The script defaults to using an attached Pi camera. If you have a USB webcam instead, add dash dash USB cam to the end of the command. However, it'll have a better frame rate if you use a Pi camera. The script can take up to a minute to initialize. Once it's initialized, you'll see a window showing a live view from your camera. Common objects inside the view will be identified and have a rectangle drawn around them. Hey guys! With the SSD light model, the Raspberry Pi 3 performs fairly well, achieving a frame rate higher than 1 FPS. This is fast enough for most real-time object detection applications. Press Q to quit the application. You can also use a model you trained yourself by adding its frozen inference graph into the object detection directory and changing the model path in the script. I'll show how this works for my playing card detection model, which I've provided a Dropbox link for in the video description below. The card model folder contains the frozen inference graph for my card model, and the card label map.pb text file is the label map for the cards. Copy the Dropbox URL, go back to the terminal, type wget, paste the link, and press enter. Once it's downloaded, unzip the model by issuing unzip cardmodel.zip. Move the unzipped card label map file into the data folder by issuing mv card underscore label map dot pp text space data. Then open the object detection script by issuing sudo idle3 object detection pi camera dot pi. Go to the line where the model name variable was assigned and change the string to card underscore model, which is the name of the folder the frozen inference graph is located in. On the path to labels line, change the name of the label map file to card underscore label map dot pb text. Finally, change the number of classes to 13, which is the number of classes that my card detector can identify. Save and exit the file. Next, rerun the object detection script. The camera will now detect and identify playing cards in the video feed. You can train your own object detection model to detect objects specific to your application by following the instructions in my previous video, How to Train an Object Detection Classifier Using TensorFlow on Windows 10. It shows you how to set up TensorFlow, label images, prepare training data, and train an object detection model. Once you've trained a model and generated its frozen inference graph, you can set it up the same way I did in this video. Since the Raspberry Pi is low cost and portable, it offers plenty of creative applications for object detection that wouldn't make sense for a full-sized computer. For example, I love cats, so I'm currently working on a digital cat flap that sends you a text message when it detects that your cat wants to be let inside. I'll show how it works in an upcoming video. The video will also answer some questions I've gotten about how to find the coordinates of detected objects or trigger an action when certain things are detected. I hope you're able to find a cool application for using object detection on the Raspberry Pi. Good luck with your projects and thanks for watching this video. See you next time!